shiny. I am just working on mixing coffee. I like to put maple syrup in my coffee, so that needed to get done this morning because I need this. <laughs> this is one of the important parts of my day. Look at what I harvested last night, a little melon. It's got some spots on it that I know aren't good, but once my kids wake up this morning or today, we're gonna, we're gonna cut into it and see what it is. I don't remember what kind of melon it is. I grew a bunch of different melons and I did a bunch of stuff um, and I kind of labeled it and then I, I, I didn't label it very good or I just forget. <laughs> So, so anywho, let's go tackle some things in the garage because we're going to go out in the garden early this morning before the heat. One of my today projects is starting some seeds. I got these nifty seed containers. They are by Bursey. I found them at uh, one of our local stores called Dirt Cheap. It's like where they get all the leftovers from stores and they sell them pretty cheap <laughs> so what i loved about this is it has its own watering system it's just a small how many cells 36 but each bottom you can push and it will like pop out so i'm very excited about these for some of my fall starts i need to um plant some herbs and things I want to get going for the, it will be for next year but I want to get them started and established now um, and then they will be good to go for the spring um, I just noticed the inside of this box I'm just going to toss it it's a whole diagram so you could write down what is in each one to keep track how sweet is that um, I have two of these so I'm very excited and at the same store, I got some Rippy seed starting mix. So that is one of my projects. It's on top of three bags of soil because I got another green stock. Love them because can fit so much in them in such a small space and they are just awesome they are so cool I have three and they all need a big big refresh right about now and then I'm gonna set up another one I don't know if I'm gonna set up the other one today or if it's going to be tomorrow I need to get it out here and do a lot of garden work and that is what my plan is this weekend as well. But I really wanna start with my green stocks. So let me show you them and let's talk about them because the heat we have had is really, really taking a toll on them. So here are my three green stocks. I have the light green terracotta and a stone. So I just got a second terracotta, where is it, right here? And some of them, you know, they're just not looking great. Like, look at this. Dead. 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 Ugh. It has been so hard this year with the amount of heat and the lasting heat we've had, I guess you could say. It's just, it's been brutal on so much. So every year we get almost like two growing seasons out of our really long growing season. And when the heat hits, it kills just... 50% of my garden usually. Like you can see, I have taken out, where is it? Mm, went the wrong way. Where am I going? I don't even, you know, anyways, I've taken out like the majority of my tomatoes and everything like that because they're just done. Things are starting to bloom and do stuff, but they're not really going anywhere. They're not really doing anything. Let's sit down and drink coffee while we talk about gardens. So what, what is happening is we get so much heat and so much just 
humidity and everything. It kills so much. So what happens is we get heat and it's just relentless. Um, absolutely relentless. And this side of my garden looks beautiful right now, right? It gets all morning sun completely shaded in the afternoon. This side of my garden is the opposite. <laughs> it gets sun all day long. All day, every day. Do you see Remy? Remy! Hello! Hello! He'll sit there and just hang out with me. Zero will avoid me the whole time. That's what it's like having an old grumpy dog. Um, but anyways, yeah, our heat just like affects everything in my garden really, really bad. And it gets to the point where nothing grows. So I just cut it out and that's how I dealt with it. And we get such bad heat that it's just not fun. You don't want to be outside like uh, it's six something in the morning and I'm not gonna to want to be outside past probably nine or ten o'clock by this point because I will be I'll be sweating through my clothes and it will be miserable beyond miserable and it stays that way till probably seven o'clock at night it's really frustrating this time of year I don't know how some people do it outside Heat exhaustion is just something that happens so uh, prevalently here. Uh, not far from where we are, we've seen in news reports of people dying of heat exhaustion because they think they can handle it and then they can't between, you know, heat exhaustion, stroke, all of that. It is just, it's a lot. And I don't think some people realize how bad that can affect you. So that's one thing I'm very cautious about conscious, conscious, cautious. I keep very aware about it because I do not want anything to happen to me or my kids in the heat. And my husband, unfortunately, sometimes can't get around it. So look at him. Isn't he such a good boy? He's so good. He turns three in just a couple weeks. Uh, but anyhow, so my green socks take the biggest beating because you have to water them every day. And I have struggled this garden season in getting out here consistently because of medical stuff. So I had my hip replacement. I have been feeling amazing about that, but I have an eye problem um, and they're trying to figure out what it is. It's one of those that it's not an easy fix. And um, it makes my eyes to where they get so dry. The sky, I, eye skin, the skin around my eyeballs, my eyelids and all that, they get so um, dry and crusty and literally like almost scabbed over with dry skin. So I can't keep my eyeballs open and I'm really struggling. And it's something that I've struggled with really, really bad this year. Um, it's the worst it's ever been. I've been dealing with this for a few years now. You know, it is what it is, but it's one of those just just shaking your head at it like can't figure it out so it's really hindered how much I want to do outside just because I can't open my eyeballs right now I'm doing good but um you know I'm just taking it with a salt grain of salt so what I want to do is get in here and start clipping things out and trimming things up I'm going to water them and then if I don't get my other green stock set up that's okay because I'm going to do a little fun outside gardening and then I'm going to go inside today and all I'm going to do is work on my canning course. So I'm so close to being done with my canning course and I just got to sit and finish it. I have a couple more graphic things to make and then I need to um, where is my brain going? And I need to do some more video editing, but it, it's just very time consuming work, <laughs> very time consuming work. My goal is to have it done before we start our homeschool year, which that is starting <laughs> next month. 
So I want to get it done by the middle of next month and I want and it's going to launch and I am just so excited to share all my canning knowledge with everybody. So some of my favorite snips I bought this year are from Husky. They're just these little precision snips and I love them and they have this notch and you can just get in there. This side is serrated so if you need to like cut, it cuts. So I love them. What I'm going to start on is just finding and oh, cutting what I can. That one's not going to cut. I try to leave the roots in something. We're going to just cut down this Cosmo. So I am making a pretty big change over here in my garden. So behind my green stalks, I have a, uh, what's it called? A fabric grow bag set up. I have two grow bags and they just don't last I think in my weather. They probably last really well in other people's weather. Not mine. So with where we are with our heat and humidity um, I've noticed some things just don't hold up like others and grow bags seem to be one of them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm getting rid of it and I have some pots in my front yard that hold my herbs and stuff like that and those are probably just gonna get moved back here and I got another green stock to put here against the fence. So I'll kind of just smush them to the fence and call it good. Uh, the reason I've decided to do that is just because it's the best bang for your buck. I absolutely love green stocks. They hold up so well in my weather and I'm working with limited garden space. And what I love is that the green stock is basically 30 little planters in one and you water it one time. Well, you know, water it from the top and that's what I love about the green stock. Let's trim up this guy. I believe this is my Canterbury Bell up here. It says it's supposed to bloom its second year. It's the second year. So I'm hoping I give it a little trim. We can we can see. I don't even know what will grow down here. I see a bunch of new growth, which is awesome. This Canterbury Bell or whatever it is actually um, never went dormant in the winter. It stayed green the whole time, which I thought was so cool. And it gets a little, you know, a little toasty here in the summer but it is looking so pretty at first i thought i i planted lettuce here and then i realized it wasn't lettuce and it's supposed to be a beautiful flower i'm just waiting for it to be get all these dead leaves off. There we go. And I think it's two plants. Maybe it's three plants in here. I might try to separate them in the fall to give it some more room. I just think it's pretty. So all I'm doing, going through my green stock and cutting and removing. And then I know I have limited time so I am going to plant them this weekend. But right now, I'm just gonna be good and cut them. So let's see, there's some zinnias, that's some basil. And then these marigolds, I'm actually chopping off. Not all of them, but some of them because I'm going to plant other things in them for the fall. Oh, maybe 
maybe if I can, there it goes, chop them. I do, I'm gonna leave some. So here's one. It's a lot nicer looking than the, those ones. These ones are like itty bitty tiny <laughs> marigolds. They are like little button guys. So that's what I'm gonna do. I do have like some tomatoes down here that are just, got a little neglected. I feel like every year in gardening, you win some, you lose some. This year, my green stalks were kind of my, my lose some. Could I have done better? Yeah. Did I? Nope. Does that hurt my feeling? A little bit, but it's okay. I mean, there's always next year. It's just seeds, you can replant. Let me give my, ooh, spider. Let me give this a haircut and see what to do. My, I've always done really well with strawberries in pots and this year I've just, either I've struggled or the strawberries were struggle buses. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna give the other two haircuts and then I'll give you a tour of what they look like. So you can see this grow bag behind mine. They are just looking sad. Everything in here is looking sad and everything in here is pretty much done. I do have a few peppers I might dig out and try to repot, but everything in here is just so done because of how our growing season is. Now, if I look over here, but look at those green beans over there. So these are the pole beans I want to plant on my trellis. Look at them, they're just going nuts. I love planting them every year. They're growing like crazy and they put on a ton of blooms, but they don't necessarily produce the best right now because of how hot we are. But I'm hoping they just continue and they will put off a whole lot of beans. Here are my green stalks. You can see they look a whole lot better now that they're cleaned up. This a stone lighter color one looks pretty stinking bare, but there's only so much you can do with it. I do have some soil to add in these. You can see, especially in this tan, my terracotta one right here, it's low on soil. So everything needs to be topped off on soil. I have that to add to this, but so much of the dead is now completely gone. They're very sad looking, but at least they look happier now that it's all green on them. Oh my gosh, we have the loudest AC unit. So everything's cleaned up. I have tucked in some of my strawberry runners. You can see another runner here. It's not quite long enough to tuck in. Um, so in hopes that strawberries will just keep reproducing since I don't grow them in a bed and I grow them this way to have more bed space elsewhere. I'm excited to take out this long grow bed, grow bag, and then slide these here. So all the dirt that's in here is gonna go into some pots and then my existing beds. I do have, so on my cinder block beds, I didn't fill in all the holes that I wanted to. So I am going to fill in top off soil from this grow bag. And you can just see like there is moss, mushrooms, all sorts of stuff. I wish I could show you, like you could feel the fabric of the bag. It's just like disintegrating. And then I do, and I also have a little grow bag back there. It's held up a bit better, but it's starting to become the same. So my hope is to put just pots and my green stalks here. And then I can also clean um, along the fence. That is also another problem. I can't really like weed whack the fence line the best because the grow bags are in the way. So it's gonna be a project. I'm okay with that. Um, it needs to happen. It's just, this is not as conducive for where we live. Thank you guys for joining me this random morning out in the garden. Everything here is looking so much happier and I can't wait to go in and start deciding what I'm gonna be planting in these. 
I made a video a few back about what seeds I want to plant for the fall and so I'm gonna start deciding what is gonna go in these from that I do know I want to put some green beans in here as well as in ground gardens um, some of the green beans I have planted this year weren't necessarily bush they all said bush but some of them are turning into pole beans so I'm a little confused but um I do plan to plant a ton of bush beans to try to grow as many uh, green beans I can for the year, especially since I have so many open pockets and green beans cycle so fast. And then I wanna try growing some cabbage in these over the fall and winter. Um, before I go in though, I am gonna water these, but nobody needs to sit there and listen to water and make it make you run. <laughs> so thank you guys for joining me. I'm gonna finish up my second cup of coffee and take care of some plants. So join me for the next garden video and we're gonna tackle more projects. And I'm, I'm hot and sweaty, so it's, it's time to go in. Bye friends.